You are listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast, where we believe the Bible is sufficient and answers life's problems. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Christensen. This podcast is for everyone in the body of Christ, staff pastor, church leader, caring homemaker, the responsible businessman, everybody. But it's also for my Calvary Chapel University students. Shout out, hello to you guys. All of us are called to offer counsel regularly. And we every day need a word of counsel from the Lord. So these episodes are designed to assist you in learning to give godly counsel. Also to develop discernment in evaluating counsel that you receive. So it's my prayer that these podcasts, that these episodes will enlarge your vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's get started. See you on the inside. We're talking about the psychologizing of the faith. In this episode, we're reminded what Jude says in his little epistle. Verse 3, he says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. In the last episode, we expounded and taught about the fact that Jude is saying how important it is to do battle and stand for the word of God, the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. And why does he say it's important and it is, um, it, he found it necessary because verse four says, for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny our only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The psychologizing of the faith, the watering down of the truth of the Word of God, especially in the counseling arena, but in many, many other areas, uh, we're finding that uh, to be the case because uh, the reality is our culture, the United States of America and around the world, we've exported this psychological theory, but our culture has become deeply and extensively psychological, kind of this weird religion of the American culture that's kind of cultish. Our culture is into psychological theory because... It's all about self and the independent self-life and self-exaltation. And it's uh, analyzing self, developing self, improving self, the hierarchy of self-centered needs. And it's invading the church. Yes, I can understand why the culture around us would love psychology because self is God when you don't have God as God. And so we did touch on that last time. And so part two, where we're going to pick up now, what is one of the biggest problems that it's, it's so serious because psychological theory does not deal with the problem of sin. So if you want to grab your Bibles, why don't you join me in Romans chapter five, a foundational truth, Romans five, 12, we'll look all the way into verse 17 and briefly discuss the problem of sin. When sin gets psychologized, when when the biblical foundation is removed, a major foundation stone gets shifted, realigned, rearranged, redefined when you remove sin, the problem of sin. Because it says, listen to this, Romans 5, 12, therefore, just as one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Through the one man, sin entered the human family. This is Adam, and with that sin came death. And that death or deadness, a a spiritual non-responsiveness, really an alienation toward God, spread to all men, every generation, because all sinned in Adam. Adam, so to speak, sired a race of sinners, and all walked in that same sin, the Adamic 
nature. We're born in Adam and need to be born again. And verse 17 in Romans chapter 5 says this, For if by the one man's offense death reigned, it says, through the one, let me read that again, for if, if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, listen, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So there's there's a remedy here. I don't want, want to leave you without the remedy, but the problem is sin. And, and psychological theory doesn't deal with sin. One man's offense because of Adam, and this is in the garden, there's sin brought alienation and separation and death to all mankind, because of his sin, death reigned. Have you ever wondered, have you ever looked around and scratched your head? How about your own life? How about your family's life? Think about right now. How do lives get so devastated, torn up, distorted, perverted, destructive, empty, and broken? You know, I was talking to a gentleman the other day, and he, he shared his entire story. It was a Yeah, it was a counseling time. It was a time of discipleship. And boy, as I heard his story from from a ruined marriage to ruined children, I mean, the whole thing was devastating to hear. And as I was listening, I was just thinking of this. Why do lives get so devastated and, and torn up and broken? It's because death reigns over humanity. That's what it says in verse 17. By one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Death reigns. Death, this tyrant, killing, wicked dictator. It's called death here. Uh, Elsewhere, 2 Corinthians 4.4, the God of this world. Death rules over people's lives if they're in Adam and not in Christ. And as I was talking to this gentleman... I realized he was not in Christ. His family wasn't born again. They weren't walking with the Lord. It happened later on in his life, but this is what the world faces. What's what's even worse, what's sad to me, is to see in the body of Christ people walking in fleshly, edemic, um, you know, walking away from the Lord and walking in the flesh. And it brings death. It's sad, and that's what we do as counselors is we recognize and see death is reigning, yeah, especially if they're in Adam and not in Christ. Death rules over people's lives if they're in Adam. They're not born again. They're not in Christ, and that's the big problem that people has, that man, mankind has, sin and the death that it brings. Psychological theory cannot deal with that situation. It does not in any psychological tech book, textbooks, Freud, Jung, Maslow, Carl Rogers, any of the those foundational geniuses, yes, they're smart, they're geniuses, they're brilliant men that have described life and how to figure life out and how to fix life with God left out of the picture. And they've come out with great ideas that are enticing and intriguing, but they don't have the problem of sin and death that it brings because they don't have a biblical worldview. What is the remedy for death? Romans 5.17 continues, much more. Much, much more. I love the much more grace of God because much more than death, which sounds just devastating, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Man's problem is sin. God's remedy is grace. And there's a reigning, much bigger reign of life than a reign of death. Fascinating scripture. Very, very applicable to the biblical counselor. This is biblical anthropology. This is how a human being that is that is made up of a body, soul, and spirit, it's an anthropological, theological truth that we must understand 
And we need to know this. It needs to be rooted in our, our minds and our hearts because so much humanism has crept into the church. This will alert you. If you understand this theology, it'll be easy to filter out and push away uh, the, the error of the age because the problem is sin and God's remedy is grace. That's a critical, foundational, major foundation stone of the faith once for all delivered to the saints, as Jude said. So if you ever ask, what is humankind's basic problem? There's the foundational issue. The bedrock, bottom line problem is sin, all of all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The penalty of sin is death. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. There is the remedy. What is the remedy? It's grace and in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's grace found in Jesus Christ. Grace that forgives sin, forgives the sinner, but then goes further and transforms the sinner in grace for sanctification, grace for forgiveness initially, but that's a done deal once and done. Then there's grace for transformation, sanctification, day by day by grace, turning from death reigning over us to bring those who can learn to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We can reign in life. People that God brings our way, that are broken and bound and stuck in sin can learn to reign in life and you can help them. You can walk with them as they walk with God and talk with God and help them understand grace and the gift of righteousness as described in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. These are things that you could spend a year with your with the people that you're working on. Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, excellent content for the biblical counselor. So what does it say in Romans chapter 5, 17? There is two irreplaceable truths we need to understand. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Let's talk about those two phrases in Romans 5, 17. The abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Now, when we're born again, we have one of those and not necessarily the other. The other's available, but one of them is automatic if we're born again. What is that? It's the gift of righteousness. His righteousness has been imputed to my account, the the righteousness of Christ. I'm not made righteous I'm declared righteous. I'm bankrupt spiritually. His righteousness fills my spiritual account, so to speak. And so the gift of righteousness makes me right, rightness before God. I've been born again. I'm seen through the, the blood of Christ. I'm in Christ. But abundance of grace, not everybody walks in it. Not, no, not everybody is walking in the abundant, overflowing Grace of God for sanctification and growth. It's a it's a growing in grace by day by day. And so that's what we want to point people to. The basic problem, if you ask it, is sin. What's the remedy? Grace. Grace found in Jesus. And how do you reign in life? Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Abundance of grace. Not just grace that forgives but grace that builds and rescues and transforms and matures and makes us fruitful and useful. Man's problem, sin. God's remedy, grace. This is what you as a biblical counselor should be leaning into, training those that you're serving, that they are, are they walking in the abundance of grace available to them? to learn how to reign in life. Because a lot of times people are not. Their their death is ruling. And the church should be teaching this. We should be preaching and standing on the remedy of God's grace for not only forgiveness, 
but to build us up and transform us and rescue us and mature us and watch it cause fruitfulness and usefulness in the kingdom of God and ever daily growing in grace. That's the remedy that God has available. You will not find that in humanistic psychological theory because that's what's going on in the church world right now. Instead, the problem is no longer sin. Just look around, read the books, check them out. The problem is dysfunctionalism or codependent, codependency, things like victimization. You know, psychological theories, they try to explain difficulties that people face. And you know, there's, there's real, actual observation that these theories kind of point out. I mean, if, you, if you're familiar with the Diagnostical Statistical Manual, number, I think it's version 5, DSM-5, this is what uh, counselors will use to code insurance claims when they're, uh, you know, when they're trying to get paid for a counseling session. They'll say, well, this is, you know, you're, you're codependent or you're, you know, a victim or what have you. And they have, they, they read that theory in the DSM, I've got a copy of it, and you know, you, you compare and contrast it with the Word of God. But nevertheless, the problem with it is man's wisdom, man's theories, they miss by a mile the problem that they see. They cannot describe it accurately. Yeah, they have observations and they look good and they they try to explain man's difficulties, but they're looking through a lens of a different worldview, so they come up with a different problem, and the problem's not ever sin. They underestimate, really, the problem that they see. Man's problem, humankind's problem, your problem, my problem isn't dysfunctionalism. You know, if I could just function a little better, (laughs) you know, and, you know, and everybody else would see that, then I would be, I would be good. No, the Bible teaches my problem Our problem, humanity's problem, is that we have fallen short of the glory of God and have sinned. It's not inadequate function or dysfunction. It's a matter of sin. And it will take a person, a human, into death and alienation from God when you're separated from God by sin. So when you go to psychological theory, it underestimates the problem totally. Victimization. How about that one? That's not... Man's, mankind's problem. I hear it all the time. I'm just a victim. Everybody did me wrong. I mean, if you knew my parents, if you knew my friends, if you knew my professor, (laughs) if you knew my church, if you knew my pastor, well, that's why I'm such a mess. It's their fault. I mean, this is what people are saying and doing. I hear it all the time. What a pathetic way to try to explain the troubles we get into. You know, it's, it's, it's worldly. And it's, it lacks, I mean, the Word of God has a depth of, uh, of, of description and remedy. I get it. Yes, I'm one, too, that I would say people have done awful things, you know, to me. And, and people have done awful things to all of us. But we've done awful things to others. But worst of all, we've sinned against God. And so the, the, the root of man's problem, the root of man's problem is sin. It isn't the solution is to function a little better or no longer be codependent. Let's get you self-dependent is what they say. Just live for me, take charge of my life, or victimization, let's find who to blame. Those aren't remedies. All of those things, what do they do? They multiply, compound the problem. And this is the psychological theories. It's the psychologizing of the faith. This is what we're finding in today's world. So Jude said this. I found it necessary. You know, he he started out, Beloved, I love you. I was diligent to write. I want to talk about our common salvation. Pretty good thing. You know, we're born again. We, we, We live together in this salvation, but I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. The faith, the objective content of our faith, the faith, 
the word of God. It was once for all delivered. It's the closed canon. Everything God's wanted to say, he said it to humanity, and he's written it in a book for it's been inspired, it's inerrant, it's sufficient. It is the final authority that we have. And so we can trust the word of God, the inspired, sufficient, inerrant, authoritative word of God. And he's found it necessary that we're to contend and stand on the word of God when we come up against anybody that is going to try to water it down with and, and integrate it with humanistic theory. I see it all the time. I see it everywhere. Maybe you do too. Maybe I'm uh, speaking to the choir or maybe this is new to you because he says it in, in verse four, certain men have crept in unnoticed. People have crept in and they've come into the church. This is not an apologetic about cults or, or, or false teaching uh, without outside of the circle of the church. This is an apologetic type ministry for those who have crept inside the church and they've been unnoticed. Long ago, they were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men, they turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what's happening in our churches across the land, our seminaries, our, our just in every corner of Christianity. And so we need to call people back. Yes, we want to do it with kindness, with grace, with love, but with truth. And these things are, are, are heavy on my heart and your heart, that we want to be those that are willing to get back to the root of man's problem because there cannot be remedy. I want to see people whole and healthy and strong and back walking rightly with God and with others. And we must first find where the problem is so that we have a correct diagnosis. We can apply the correct remedy, which is grace, sin and grace. Hey, I hope this helps God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. You can learn more at jeffchristensen.org. That's jeffchristensen.org. And be sure to share this podcast with a friend. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.